In this video, we will look at the anatomy of the eye, an overview. So here we begin with the cross section of the eye. We have the conjunctiva, the cornea. The cornea is on the same layer with the sclera, which is at the posterior end of the eyeball. The iris surrounds your pupil. The iris makes the color of your eye and is responsible for the size, um, changing the size of the pupil through its two muscles. So here is the pupil, the black part of the eye, which captures the image you are seeing. Behind the pupil are the lens, which can change shape. The primary refractive structures that bend the incoming light has to focus the image on the retina. These primary stru structures are the lens and cornea. So these are the main structures basically responsible for bending the incoming light to focus on the retina at the back. So the layers of the eye on the posterior aspect, from the outside, we have the sclera, then the choroid. Within the same layer of the choroid are the ciliary bodies. The choroid, ciliary bodies, and iris make up what is known as the uvea. The inner layer of the eyeball is the retina, which contains the photoreceptors. The retina has a section called the fovea. The fovea is a small central pit composed of closely packed cone, uh, cone cells, the cones in the eye, and cones are your photoreceptors. The retina captures images through the photoreceptors. These images then get sent along nerve fibers that travel through the optic disc and form the optic nerve, which is your cranial nerve number two. Other structures that pass the optic disc are the retinal arteries and the veins. So what is inside the eyeball itself? Well, there is a fluid inside the eyeball. Um, this, is, this fluid is called the vitreous humor. We say the vitreous humor occupies the posterior cavity of the eye, and we will learn about the anterior cavity next. But before going into the anterior cavity and the posterior cavity as well, um, let us just recap the basically layers of the eyeball. So the wall of the eyeball is made up of three layers. So the first layer is basically the fibrous sclera and the cornea, which is in the same layer. The second layer is the choroid, the iris, and the ciliary bodies, which make up the uvea. I think I pronounced that right. And then the third layer is the retina, which contain your photoreceptors, the rods and the cones. So let us zoom into the anterior section of the eyeball here. So here is the anterior section of the eyeball. There is the posterior cavity and an interior cavity. The posterior cavity is separated from the anterior cavity by the lens. So here is the lens. So here the space anterior to the lens is known as the anterior cavity. And the posterior cavity, as I mentioned, contains the vitreous humor. Here are the ciliary bodies. And coming off the ciliary bodies and connecting the lens are suspensory ligaments. Thus we can say that the ciliary bodies are responsible for the, for the shape of the lens. And we will learn about this later on. But keep note of that. So here is the iris, which is the color bit of your eye. And, con and the iris contains muscles, which contract or relax, and is responsible for how big your pupil is, and thus how much light is entering your eye or hitting your retina. Okay, now let us talk about the anterior cavity which, as I mentioned, is separated from the posterior cavity by the lens. But the anterior cavity can be further divided by the iris into the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. The anterior cavity, unlike the posterior cavity, contains a fluid called the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor carries nutrients for the anterior structures of the eye. The aqueous humor is produced by the capillary network within the ciliary bodies, then drained into the canal of Schlem before entering the blood. Canal of Schlem 
is also known as the scleral venous sinus. So here we can see the aqueous humor produced by, uh, from the ciliary bodies and it drains into the canal of Schlem. This canal is important because obstruction of the aqueous humor drainage can lead to a eye condition called glycoma. And this is because pressure essentially builds up as fluid as the fluid cannot drain out. And so this will lead to glycoma, which can damage the, op uh, the eye's optic nerve and can result in vision loss and blindness. Next, let us learn a bit about the iris and pupil and its innervations. So here is the eye from the front. The sclera is the white part of your eye. The pupil is the black part of the eye where light enters. Surrounding the uh, pupil is the iris. And the iris is the, remember, the color of your eye. And the iris controls the size of the pupil and thus adjusts the amount of light entering the eye. Now let us look at two scenarios where the pupil constricts and relaxes. So pupillary constriction and pupil, uh, pupillary dilation. Remember the iris has two muscles. These are the sphincter muscles and the dilator muscles on the outside. The sphincter muscles are responsible for pupillary constriction and these sphincter muscles are similar. The sphincter muscles are responsible for pupillary constrictions and these sphincter muscles are stimulated by the parasympathetic um, nerve. Thus, sympathetic stimulation causes pupillary dilation through the dilator muscles. So when you're in fight or flight response, you have dilated pupils, so you can see more. Next topic in this video, we will look at accommodation, the lens and ciliary bodies. So again, just recapping, we have a cross section of an eyeball. The fovea here contains a lot of cones, the photoreceptors, a particular type of photoreceptor. And, um, and where most of the image uh, from the pupil is basically captured, the fovea. The fovea is within the layer called the retina. And the retina, as I mentioned, contains the photoreceptors, which send information to the nerve fibers that make up the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is cranial nerve number two. As light passes through the eye, it is bent by the cornea and the lens and is focused on the retina. So here is the cornea and here is the lens. These are the primary structures responsible for focusing the light entering the eye and it focuses on the fovea at the back. The lens is an elastic uh, structure consisting of transient fibers. Here is a lens, but things can happen to the lens. The fibers of the lens can become opaque. This can result in no light entering the eye. This condition of the lens becoming opaque is called cataract. Okay, now, the greater the lens curvature, the more light bends. The ability to adjust the strength of the lens is known as accommodation. So basically, the ability to constrict um, make the lens tight is known as accommodation. And let us look at uh, that now and by looking at two different scenarios. So the strength of the lens depends on its shape, okay, which is regulated by the ciliary, bod uh, ciliary muscles. So if you remember your anatomy, here is your ciliary system. Sympathetic stimulation causes the ciliary muscles, the bodies, to relax. And this will cause the lens to flatten and weak. So it will may basically make it relax. Parasympathetic stimulation, on the other hand, will uh, constrict the ciliary muscles, resulting in a rounded, strong lens. So it's adjusting the strength of the lens for accommodation, remember. And these changes that the lens can perform by being, you know, as I mentioned, round and stronger is known as, is part of accommodation. Okay, so how does accommodation work? Well, if you see an object far away, so a far source, there is no accommodation. 
and your lens do not need to change. When there is no accommodation, the ciliary muscles are relaxed and thus the lens are relaxed. Light that enters the eye is refracted by the lens and hits the retina and all is good. However, when your eye focuses on objects close to you, so near source, you need to accommodate. There, um, there has to be accommodation and this is where the parasympathetic nerve causes the ciliary muscles to con contract and so the lens tighten and the light can then be refracted more and thus more focused on the retina. So I hope that made sense. Again, normally light is adjusted so that light hits the retina. There is a condition, however, where the lens change with age. This is known as presbyopia. And this results in a reduced ability to accommodate. Thus, light is refracted everywhere and doesn't really hit the retina. And so vision becomes blurry. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the anatomy of the eye. Thanks for watching.